Good morning, Wilberforce University family, and welcome to Founders Day 2022, celebrating the vision and tenacity of those who came before us and who, in 1856, were fearless in imagining a university for Black folks when people of African descent were still enslaved in the American South. Each year, we gather to commemorate our founders to honor those groundbreaking thought leaders and disruptors who were not only pioneers of education, but trailblazers of present day social justice warriors. Wilberforce stands today as visible testimony to the strength, resilience, and tenacity of our founders. In 1856, the year Wilberforce was established, the nation was in simmering turmoil, even though the Civil War had not yet been declared. The issue of slavery and the enslavement of people of African descent challenged the American ideal of freedom and justice for all men and women. In this American democracy, there existed laws and customs designed to keep African Americans enslaved. A plantation owner once noted that slavery and education were incompatible. Education was the great equalizer, and an educated person would not remain enslaved for long. Imagine then the courage at the time when ministers of the African Methodist Episcopal Church and the Cincinnati Conference of the Methodist Episcopal Church came together to establish a university for people of African descent right here on the grounds in Green County, Ohio. The founding of Wilberforce University represented a critical pivotal moment in the cultural history of not only African Americans, but also for white people as well, who believe that God created all men and women equal. As the first private institution of higher learning in the nation to be founded by African Americans, this tangible manifestation of group self-determination and empowerment were bold and daring and it completely ignored and disrupted the social and cultural constraints of 1856 America. And now, here we are, Wilberforce University, the nation's first and oldest private institution of higher learning founded by African Americans and still operating in 2022 under its original name. Our beloved Wilberforce has demonstrated the ability to overcome challenges and embrace all who enter to learn and to be a place where you can all imagine possibilities that make them happen. So 166 years later, 
that bold idea and that courage proudly remain at the intersection of a glorious past and an exciting future. It is up to us to cherish Wilberforce, to protect Wilberforce, and to work to reclaim and continue the legacy of prominence that is our birthright and our gift. We are Wilberforce University, the first and the future. Good morning, morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I have been asked to give the invocation today. Join me now in prayer. Oh God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, O oh Lord, for life, health, and strength. We thank you, O oh Lord, for Wilberforce University. Lord, we pray that you continue to bless us. We give you praise and thanksgiving and appreciation. For all the years that you have blessed Wilberforce, Lord, I pray that as we celebrate this Founders Day with those who are far and those who are near, that they will feel your presence. Be with us, all who lead and learn, all who teach and serve, all who seek after goodness, truth, and love. Lord, just let us know that you will not leave us nor forsake us. And I pray, O oh God, that you receive our prayer and let the words in my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. It is in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Let all believers say, Amen. Good morning. I'm Mark Wilson, and I'm chair of the Wilberforce University Board of Trustees. I bring you greetings on behalf of that body, and I'm excited to welcome you to the celebration of the 166th occasion of the founding of our beloved school. This year's theme is focused on our love letters to the school. And I, like many other proud alums, have so many stories from our days there that are steeped in love and a long-standing commitment to the legacy of our school. Today's ceremony is focused on just that, honoring the legacy of Wilberforce and encouraging us all to protect its ongoing future. Enjoy the services this morning. Wilberforce University the oldest HBCU in the United States of America, the first private historically black owned and operated by the African Methodist Episcopal Church. W.E.B. Du Bois in 1903 called the AME Church the premier organization in the United States operated by black Americans. In 2004, Gerard Wilmore repeated W.E.B. Du Bois's claim about the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Wilberforce University has hosted Frederick Douglass, W.E.B. Du Bois, Martin Luther King Jr., and Charlotte McCleckley from the Republic of South Africa studied at Wilberforce University. Wilberforce University in Wilberforce, Ohio, has six core values. Emphasis on its students, emphasis on religion, emphasis on Christian principles, interest, emphasis on a quality education, emphasis on social and community responsibilities, and a history, a great history and traditions. HBCUs have been primarily the responsible places where training was provided for those African-American students who went on to serve the United States of America. Why not consider starting your higher education experience at Wilberforce University? 
I started mine at an HBCU. HBCUs train more than 80% of African-American children in the United States of America. Consider beginning the second phase of your life at Wilberforce University. Nelson Mandela said in his autobiography, for Africans, it's not a like of ability, it's a like of opportunity. Wilberforce University wants to provide an opportunity for you to train your mind and prepare your life to make a contribution to the United States of America. God bless you and welcome to Wilberforce University. Hello, my Wilberforce family and friends. I'm James B. Stafford III, the national president of Wilberforce University Alumni Association and a proud graduate from the class of 1973. On behalf of the Wilberforce University Alumni Association's board of directors and the many alums from across this country, I welcome you to the 166th Founders Day celebration. Wilberforce University, the first private historically black university owned and operated by African Americans. Thank you for coming. God bless. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness, but still I rise, Maya Angelou. Greetings, Wilberforce family, friends, and students. I am Morgan George, a junior majoring in sociology, and I have the abundant pleasure of serving as the 95th Miss Wilberforce University. To the rock of my character and the seam of my accomplishments, I love you. My experience at this university has been very unique and sweet. From a freshman coming in and learning so many things and getting active quickly, I could somehow always depend on someone at this institution to be there to guide me. From the uplifting events to the fun ones, my time here has been plentiful. Wilberforce, I love thee. Please only ever change for the better. And to the one that made me and Miss Wilberforce possible, thank you. Sincerely, the 95th Miss Wilberforce University. Greetings, I am Darnay Hairston, a senior majoring in business management from Columbus, Ohio, and I have the outstanding pleasure to serve as your 2021-2022 Mr. Wilberforce University. I have attended our prestigious university for three amazing years. Transferring from a predominantly white institution to HBCU has helped me grow as a person in many ways. Where my old self was driven by attempting to fit in with the rest, internally hiding that I come from a struggling background and did not want to be judged. Since attending Mobile Force, I have embraced my struggles and turned them into motivation as I climb my way to success. Mobile Force University has blessed me with friendships, perseverance, and growth. Growth as a man, a student, a friend, and family member. The experience here is like no other. As we all know, our university will challenge our independence, tolerance, and the will to want to be successful. Dear old Wu, you are my true happiness, a very special blessing God has given to me. I am forever grateful that I have spent my last three years here. Through all of the challenges, I can say you have always been there for me. Thank you for the internships, networking opportunities, and the true friendships. This is Wilberforce University, Sue Marte. I'm here with Judge Cross and Judge Spells. I'm Judge Logan. We're all judges in Montgomery County and we're all graduates of Wilberforce University. Did you know that there are six African-American judges on the bench of Dayton, Ohio and Montgomery County and three of us are Wilberforce University graduates? I'm proud to serve on the bench of the Dayton Municipal Court and in Montgomery County with 
two other judges who are graduates of Wilberforce University, and may I say they are also sorority members of Delta Sigma Theta. I love Wilberforce University, my alma mater. It's in my DNA. I inherit a rich legacy from Wilberforce University. My grandmother was a graduate of Wilberforce University, and she was taught Greek and Latin by W.E.B. Du Bois. And Wilberforce thought it not robbery to teach a black woman Greek and Latin rather than home economics and industrial arts. I came to Wilberforce in 1973 at the hot time of the black uh, power movement, and Wilberforce was the epicenter of black pride and black excellence. It instilled in me those same values. I came to Dayton, Ohio, and uh, went to law school. My education at Wilberforce was unparalleled. I was prepared for my education in Wilberforce as well as in life. I enjoy my experience with Wilberforce University, and as I indicated, it is in my DNA, and it is my legacy. I graduated from Wilberforce in 1983. I chose Wilberforce because I wanted an HBCU experience. Wilberforce provided me with more. It provided me with that HBCU experience and a quality education. Academically and socially, I couldn't have had a better foundation. As a judge, every day I use the principles I've learned at Wilberforce. It helps me to be independent and resilient. Wilberforce is family. It's extended family. My father is a graduate of Wilberforce, as is my husband, two of my brothers, my daughter. That's my actual family. But the entire Wilberforce family, all graduates all across this land, are family. And if you go any place with the green and gold, people will walk up to you and say, oh, did you go to Wilberforce? And you, have, you feel that sense of pride. So Wilberforce taught me leadership, made me not back down from anything. I know my worth, and I help to learn it from the, the professors at Wilberforce, the family atmosphere. And let me tell you something about going to Wilberforce. If you start, they're going to make sure you finish because the education, the love, the support, the surrounding in Wilberforce is going to get you through. I am the evidence of Wilberforce University. I am Wilberforce University. I am Wilberforce University. I am Wilberforce University. Education is what remains after one has forgotten what one learned in school. Albert Einstein. Greetings and salutations, Women First Family. I am Asia McCray, and I have the pleasure to serve as the Student Government Association Senior Class President. I am a senior major, majoring in business management from Detroit, Michigan. I am here today to express my love and passion for our dear old Wu. Just as other students have shared or feel, upon my visit, I have immediately felt that I was at home and I knew this is where I needed to be from the admission staff to students and even the professors I was able to meet. They were all welcoming with open arms. Being here has allowed me to overcome my shyness to join organizations and take on leadership positions. If I did not make Wilberforce my home, I am sure that I will still be a shy girl that remained behind the scenes. Out of all the challenges our institution has faced, I can truly say I love how resilient we have remained from a fire to a tornado and other historical events. We are still here standing strong. I love that we are our family, no matter what happens. I have met so many great individuals that helped me grow in ways unimaginable. The love and support are unmatched. To my beloved institution, thank you for helping me be the person I have strived to be. You will always have a place in my heart. You are truly a college like no other. You are the Wilberforce University, the first and the future. Sue Marte, with Bulldog Pride. Greetings, my name is Adrian Trimble and I'm the Vice President and Chief Diversity Officer for Cisco Corporation, the world's largest food distributor. I'm a proud member of the Board of Trustees of Wilberforce University. I've had the distinct honor of serving as, as a member of the Board of Trustees since 2014, and it's my privilege to serve as a graduate of the Klein Program 1997. 
I'm a proud graduate of that program, a program that was available for working adults like myself that was balancing building a career while raising a family. Had the client program not been in existence, I might not have had the ability to have the corporate experiences that I've had as an executive for some of the world's largest companies. I've been able to work in the field of human resources, diversity, equity, and inclusion, as well as supplier diversity and development. It has been my privilege to be able to advocate on behalf of minority business owners as the president and CEO of the National Minority Supplier Development Council as well. All of these experiences may not have been available had I not had the opportunity to return to Wilberforce to be able to finish my degree while accelerating my career opportunities as well. I'm so thankful that the program is still available today and I'm really proud of the work that the Board of Trustees is doing to ensure that we have all types of programs available for students that want to be productive in our communities and take their leadership skills and be prepared to meet those challenges in the workplace, in our communities, and in corporate America. The Board of Trustees has worked diligently to help ensure that we are putting in place a plan for the vision of our university, ensuring that we have sustainability and that we have a vision that will allow us to produce productive students to go out and make a difference in this world. I'm thankful for the opportunities that I was afforded through Wilberforce, and I'm glad to be a member of the Board of Trustees and positioning us not only to be the first, but to continue to be the future. Thank you so very much. What's going on, good people? My name is Jay Martinez, the poet. I'm a spoken word artist out of Newark, New Jersey by way of Dayton, Ohio. I am a Wilberforce University alumni. Um, and you know, when I first got here, I was battle rapping, rapping people in the streets, rapping people here on this campus. And uh, for the first time at the Lower Lecture Hall, right here, I saw open mic and it changed me. I was writing poetry and performing since then. And more and more opportunities were coming to my way. Now I own an art company. I've been traveling the country for the last five years performing and uh, just been changing the world with my spoken word poetry, you know, using art to change everything. And that's my voice. We're before university. Where do I begin? You are living legacy. The first of so many things. 1856, the first black owned and operated college in the nation. Members were black and white, we couldn't fathom what you were facing. In a time where those who grew a beautiful hue were viewed with hate and spite. So many families afraid at night, but there were those who stayed in fight. Underground tunnels, they would raise the light against injustice and extreme racial plight. When Civil War had this country fighting a statesman, we were forced still tall making a statement. They closed your doors due to financial restraints, only to be purchased by the AME Church. Thank you, Bishop Daniel A. Payne. I'm guessing they understood your worth. There was a vision, and many contributed to its birth. Even after a great fire, you never left the location. They rebuilt you with love, charity, and donations. Yes, the ancient practice of what we call village. Aware of the struggles ahead, yet they pillage. You are more than alma mater. You speak of forward progression, whether you fall or falter. History's authors, your students continue to page changing. You have created thousands of this world's change agents. 1856 is your genesis. Here are the branches of its present tense. You are history made, history making, culture infusion, barrier breaking. You have defied time as you redefine minds. True HBCU, you are divine nine. Leader building, you are inclusion. Conversations on the ram cracking jokes in the union. Friendships turn the family on the yard. You are step shows, icebreakers, dawn dance, parties at the barn. Collegiate academia is what you brought us. But it ain't enough credit hours for the life lessons that you taught us. The African Methodist Episcopal Church, thank you for the souls you save. For the founding fathers, thank you for the road you've paved. Your impact is still a force. Abolitionists have fought by your side, so they named you after William Wilberforce. That same fighting spirit we still enforce. The Encyclopedia of Wilberforce University will continue to move on. So when you see that yellow and green, that's what it means to be bull strong. On this Founders Day 2022, we are reminded of the unbreakable bond between Wilberforce University and the African Methodist Episcopal Church. In 1787, a group of our African-American ancestors walked out of St. George's Methodist Episcopal Church in Philadelphia, protesting unchristian treatment by their white Christian brothers, declaring to their oppressors, 
If you will only allow us to finish our prayers, we will depart and trouble you no more and worship God under our own vine and fig tree. Although the movement was not formally and legally recognized until 1816, they went out, moving in every direction, organizing churches, including the southern slave states of South Carolina and Kentucky. However, it would be the westward expansion into Ohio in the early 1820s that would become the Ohio Annual Conference, which was cited by historian Howard D. Gregg as the first conference to advance the subject of organized education. Although a free state, Ohio enacted laws that discouraged the immigration uh, and settlement of blacks within its boundaries. The expansion into Ohio is even more remarkable when viewed against the backdrop of these black laws. Still, the miracle of Wilberforce University, established in 1856 on a 152-acre tract of land in Greene County, Ohio, in 30 days, Daniel Payne, armed only with a vision and the collaboration of friends, purchased that site for $10,000. Wilberforce stands today as a 166-year-old testimony to the grace of God and the power of faith and prayer. Wilberforce University, like the African Methodist Church, is sustained and supported by African-American people, many of whom have never seen the inside of a college or a university. Yet they believe that God has ordained the church of Allen and Payne and its institutions, and that God's presence and God's spirit will always reside there. They believe the ground on which Wilberforce stands and the grounds of Mother Bethel in Philadelphia, where Richard Allen is buried, like the ground on which Moses stood, is holy ground. Wilberforce, in his long and distinguished service, has always faced challenges, yet through it all, God's divine hand has always provided a way out and a way through. As the oldest historically black college and university in America, Wilberforce often challenged, survived because of the Holy Spirit, its friends and faculty, its administration and alumni, and certainly the good and faithful people of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Together, they cultivate and nurture this shining example and crown jewel of our vine and fig tree. Hello. We welcome our esteemed speaker and Wilberforce alum, Bishop Ann Henning Byfield. Bishop Byfield served as the 135th elected and consecrated bishop of the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Her historic election in the year 2016 represents the first time in the history of the AME Church that an elected clergy had a sibling on the Council of Bishops. He was Bishop C. Garnet Henney, deceased. Bishop Byfield provides leadership to the 16th Episcopal District. This is seven annual conferences representing 14 countries in the Caribbean, South America, and Europe. She is also the chair of the Global Development Council, the Commission on Women Ministry and World Methodist Evangelism. Described as one who dares to live, learn, lead, and love God, our speaker lives a life filled with creativity and passion as a bishop. Preacher, psalmist, poet, sacred word artist, strategic co consultant, writer, composer, wife, and grandmother. The golden member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated has been married to Ansley Byfield for 45 years. They have one son, Michael, and four grandchildren. She loves God and encourages others to know and love God as well. And now our speaker, Bishop Ann Henning Byfield. To Bishop E.L. McLeod, Chancellor and Presiding Bishop of the Third Episcopal District, to Dr. Pinker, the 22nd President of Wilberforce University, to Dr. Kimberly Hardy Porter, Class of 85, and Special Assistant to the Provost for Academic Initiative, to Dr. Mark Wilson, Chair of the Board, to my friend, my colleague, my soror, my son, Sister Gwendolyn Brown, to the class of 1971, and to the sorors of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness. 
and joyfully sing of your righteousness. Psalm 145, 427, for a title, The Legacy of Endurance and Inheritance of Hope. Come on in your place and just begin to give God thanksgiving and praise for this opportunity. I am a Wilberforceian through and through. It is a school of choice for my family. My mother birthed seven children, six lived, and four of the six graduated from Wilberforce. Two married their Wilberforcean schoolmates. My son attended, one nephew attended, and one nephew went to Payne and married a Wilberforcean. My sister became a Delta, all the others became AKA, and all the men became Alpha. I have significantly contributed for three students outside of the family to attend this wonderful school. It is a legacy of endurance and inheritance of hope. Jerry Payne started Wilberforce for people like so many of us, people who were gifted, not always from traditional circumstances. Many of us could not have gone to any, many of us could have gone to any school. Some could go but didn't have the funds. Some just needed a push or an opportunity to excel. And Wilberforce was for us. While Wilberforce initially started for biracial children whose slave owners wanted a safe place for them and a place where they could make it, we were the beneficiary of an excellent opportunity of education, a legacy of endurance, and from generation to the next, the story has been told and lived in struggle and hardship, yet in strength and faith. Wilberforce provides students with a diverse and inclusive community, safe environment, affordable education, Preparation for life, not so bad food in the cafeteria. And an alternative that used to be here, Mom Bailey's, where until 10 p.m. at night, you could get a bologna sandwich, hamburger, tuna, a chicken salad sandwich, and tuna cheeseburger before it became popular, and a fried egg on your cheeseburger before it became popular. And if you didn't have money, a free meal. WU provided a challenging but fun field opportunity to live in community, meet up the yard, Friendly rivalry between Greeks, have no tail done dance, and religious convocation to understand the legacy of hope. We are who we are because of this school. That is why I'm so excited and honored to be able to be here with you on this 160th Founders Day. So one of the things that I learned was that prevailing conditions prevail or don't prevail. We are here because our ancestors did not let prevailing conditions prevail. We celebrate that Wilberforce has made it through regardless of how it was, how it came, when it comes. Accreditation issues, a drop in students, bad presidents, bad students, assault by the government and lawsuits. And this institution never allowed prevailing conditions to prevail. Isaiah 54 says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It's momentary. It may wound. It may hurt. It may stay for a season. But it won't win in the end. We were born in the crucible of slavery, closed during the Civil War, lived through racism and Jim Crowism, land stolen by the state, student union burned in the 60s, tornado destroyed the campus in the 70s, and yet here we stand. We've been taught all of our daily lives that we are survivors. We're not just the descendants of a legacy of endurance from Halle Q. Bryan or W.E.B. Du Bois or McDonald Williams, Jamie Coleman Williams, Isabel Askew, Geraldine Jackson, Mr. Valentine. We are descendants of students who didn't have an Ivy League library, but a great one that allowed you to complete your research and get an A in the paper because the staff walked with you, enduring with you, enduring legacy of hand-me-down room. We had an ethic of work and fun, and professors like Mrs. Isabel, Dr. Isabel Askew, who would leave her classroom and come to your dorm room, and the speech was, your parents, your ancestors, and this school has sacrificed for you to be here. We will, against your will, create you to be the best, and when you live here, leave here, you will be educated. Now get your behind dress and get into my classroom. Ask me how I know. Whether someone ever told you or not, Rupert Stokes was, and you are the descendants of a man who believed against all credible evidence and money, who told us that every meeting, every convocation, every graduation, or any event to dream, the impossible dream, to fight the unbeatable force, to bear with unbearable sorrow, to run where the brave dare not go. This is my quest to follow the star, no matter how hopeless, no matter how far, to fight for the right without question or pause, 
to be willing to march into hell for a heavenly cause. Because of them, we prevail from generation to generation. We also learn that there is power in community. I am because you are. It takes a lot for students at Wilberforce to exist in isolation. We depend on connection, community, and caring. We are a community. And while there is the power of one, our power of one was married to a larger context because with one with others is untouchable. None of our historical and current ancestors did it by themselves. Rosa Parks, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Akbar, Muhammad Ali, Nanny Helen Bur Burroughs, Kofi Annan, Aretha Franklin, James Cone, Jacqueline Grant, Katie Cannon, Chance the Rapper, Nipsey Hussle, Madam C.J. Walker, Richard Allen, Jarena Lee, Malcolm X, Ida B. Wells Barnett, they all work with someone else in community. But your mama did, and your daddy did, and Big Mama, and Uncle Joe, their names did not make headlines, but they led their own movement and got you to Wilberforce. And so we learned as a community to misbehave for the cost of justice. We left campuses on the weekend and joined movements and had to write papers on political and social economic implications. Ask me how I know. We had to do the work of community and then turn it into some academic venture. You didn't see alphas fighting capitals for capitals fighting cubes. No, I won't talk about what happened in the Greek frat houses. That's a, that will always be closed. But we are community. And we celebrate our legacy of endurance. We are reminded there's so much that we have done and yet so much to do. Too many children to save, save. too many lives to break through, too many businesses to establish, too many people to get out of jail, too many people to keep out of jail, too many senior citizens to support, too many families grieving. And we learned that we was all right to be out of order, to be in order sometimes. And there is a larger vision to take in taking risk. We were rule breakers, and we are rule breakers. The very thought that an African American would create his own school in 1856 for black and didn't have the $10,000 in cash to buy the school, went ahead and talked them into giving them the school and then paid it when they could. We were taught not to fear white folks, not to fear Central State or Antioch or any new school built around us. We were taught that you will get a co-op job while demanding that you have a strong academic average. We were taught in HBCUs in general and WU in specific that we have been given birth directly or indirectly to the civil rights movement, the Birmingham Buscott, black mayors, congressmen, congressperson, heads of Fortune 500 company. We were directly involved in the election of the 44th black president and the black female vice president. You were, because of the school, became attorneys and doctors and chemists and biologists and educators and writers and preachers and mamas and dads. Our legacy of endurance enables us to fight against presidential assault and battery, rabble rousing congressional demagoguery, intentional stupidity, buffoonery, and violence in leadership. We wake up every day watching the enemy roll out every facet of white tribalism, proclaiming revivalism of racism, sexism, and xenophobic fascism. We have lived and are living through the war being declared with toxic policies and legislation for the elimination of allocations for the poor people of color, housing, health, and education, and families in the eradication of student loan debt. We are seeing daily police action shootings and domestic violence and other forms of destruction, but from generation to generation, we have stood. And we have learned that it is never over until it's over, but there's always an inheritance of hope. W.U. Wilberforce was always willing to walk through, work through crisis, work within crisis, and if there was no discernible solution to work with you, to help you test the big green bus driven by Mr. Wilbur, Mr. Wilbur and hit the road jack and don't come back no more. And although they created some of the panic, it's not over when you lose your scholarship. Failing an exam is not the last word. Using your, losing your boyfriend to a girl in Central State or a bad co-op placement is not over. We were told that we needed to build character help make decisions and defend our own position. 
This fool made you so frustrated that you did not back down when discussing financial aid. I know you don't have that problem now. You learned not to get intimidated over a grade because it wasn't over. There were professors who, without permission, would give interest tests to determine if you could complete in their class. But failing the test was not the final decision. A 1.1 GPA did not necessarily exclude you from admission. There was always hope. Come on, holler out, student. If you found a way to get a job even when you didn't, gra you didn't graduate at a high level. Somebody said, thank you, Jesus, if you survived confusion. Somebody said, glory, if you're still alive and the doctors thought you were dead. We have the inheritance of hope. One thing I learned in class, in quiet, online, at Holy Trinity Church, everywhere, was how to integrate our history. You may have a sociology class, and the teacher quoted the words of Chauncey Cullen, strong men keep on coming, keep on strong, keep on coming strong. In a math class, you could hear Invictus and the church Shakespeare, or in a passing moment, the professor or somebody would quote from Gwendolyn Brooks, Marty Evans, Nikki Giovanni, or Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Dunbar. It was always in faith and hope. It was always foundational. You were expected to decide the unthinkable, walk the unbelievable, and step beyond the unreachable. You would train never to reject viable solutions because they didn't come from corners where we thought solutions existed. And in the very nature of this school, every answer is not a makeshift easy or evident at first blush. It takes work, but there's always hope. Hope a way out, hope a way through, hope that you can conquer anything. When white folks with money came to speak but their politics were unacceptable, there were ways that we could shut them down without walking out. In Cleveland one time, we were asked to sing the national anthem at a white fundraising banquet for the school. We did not know until we got there. The president respected our Afrocentricity. The director told us it was our decision. They would honor our refusal to sing the Star Spangled Banner when we came prepared for a high level of complex music to sing. Some said no, absolutely no. Some asked if we could do something that would ease our anger and still sing it. And after we prayed and discussed it, discussed, we sang the national anthem, we sang it well. And then, as if it was a medley, we immediately went into lift every voice and sing so that they understood who we were and what culture we had come from. Because God is in the nonsense to make it sensible. And time after time after time, we have shown the inheritance of hope that failure is not the last word. And Wilberforce, through God has shown, God through Wilberforce has shown up, and it isn't over when everybody thinks it's over. One of the things that I learned at Wilberforce University was not taught by any professor or staff. It was how to play big wits. Now I apologize to those who aren't comfortable with a preacher talking about big wits. I don't play well. Um, car playing was not allowed in our house, and I've never learned to play my hand well. But my brothers and sisters learned in HBCUs, and three of them learned their wiggle force in Ireland Hall and Shorter Hall to play big whips. I watched, but I never was good. But when I got married, my husband and my friend played big whips all the time. And my husband would play what I thought was a bad hand. He didn't have a lot of kings and queens. As a matter of fact, I had to finally stop playing because he would get so mad because I would cut his front. So I decided that we were going to stay married and he would just play cards without me. But he would bid, I mean, just an unbelievable bid. His bid to me was stupid. His bid to me was foolish. How could he win with a no trump or a lack of trump? But then on occasion, he would run a Boston. You, you know what a Boston is. And if you don't know what a Boston is, you need to ask somebody. I asked him, how does he run a Boston on a bad hand? And he said, first of all, Ann, they don't know what's in my hand. They don't know what I have, and they don't know what my partner has. It takes skill, confidence, and courage. I play like I'm going to win every time I get up to play. I play knowing that I'm going to win some of the time, and when I lose a hand, I keep on playing the next round because it's never over until it's over. So on this 160th Founders Day, I need somebody to know that God has created you to run a Boston. It's rough, but keep on playing. Edison was told he was stupid, but he kept on inventing. Malcolm Little became Malcolm X when he was in prison, but he kept on fighting for justice. It was in a Birmingham jail that Martin
Martin King wrote, Injustice anywhere is a threat to injustice, to justice everywhere. Tricky Poitier was told at an early age that he was so bad that he could not act and he should become a dishwasher. My seventh grade homeroom teacher told me I had a big mouth, question too much, and not only would I not amount to anything, but no man would marry me. Thank God for parents who confronted that assault and told me you can be whatever you want to be. Someone here has made it on hope, hope in yourself, hope somebody else's hope that had in you and God's hope who brought you through. So I celebrate the legacy of endurance and the inheritance of hope because Wilberforce, you run a Boston. You don't have to excuse yourself out. God has brought you in. God's grace is sufficient. God's healing is powerful. Hold your head back and say, even with racism and sexism and even with religious bigotry and the LGBTQA hypocrisy, because of the goodness of Jesus, all he's done for me. And when I look back over my life, people counted women for us and they counted us up. But look how far we've come. My soul cries hallelujah. Even with a bad hand, God did more with my mistakes than he with my mistakes with my successes. So from generation to generation, keep on believing, keep on singing, keep on fighting so that the generation may know, declare it, share it. It is a legacy of hope. Show, tell, and demonstrate that God's mercy endures forever. Thank you to today's convocation participants whose love letters to Wilberforce remind us of the incredible impact our beloved Wilberforce has had on the lives of those who were blessed to experience this incredible institution. We are also reminded of the fierce bravery and boldness of our founders who transcended the social and cultural norms to establish an institution for people of African descent. Today, we look back on a wonderful history and legacy of noteworthy achievement to look forward to a vital, vibrant, and sustainable future for our Wilberforce. We are the first and the future, and it is our collective commitment to hard work and excellence that will assure that Wilberforce University will exist for another 166 years and beyond. This will be our legacy if we seize it with the same boldness and intention that our ancestors did 166 years ago. We are Wilberforce University, the first and the future. Thank you so much, Dr. Pinkoff, for the opportunity to participate in this great celebration. Now I ask that you all join me now in the benediction. Now, May the grace of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with you and you and you forever. For it's in the master's miracle-working name of Jesus the Christ, I pray. Amen. Over the past several months, the university has lost many beloved alums, faculty, board members, and staff. And although they are not here physically, they remain with us in the spirit amongst that great cloud of witnesses. We honor them now. 